Oh, and she had the goods on me, too. She knew all my little peccadilloes. People call these things imperfections, but they're not. Oh, that's the good stuff. You're not perfect, sport. And let me save you the suspense. This girl you met, she isn't perfect either. But the question is whether or not you're perfect for each other. That's the whole deal. We don't say rising into love. There is in it the idea of the fall. Taking this ghastly risk is the condition of there being life. You see, for all life is an act of faith. The moment you take a step, you do so on an act of faith because you don't know that the floor is not going to give under your feet. The moment you take a journey, what an act of faith. Any kind of undertaking in relationship, what an act of faith. You've given yourself up. This is the most powerful thing that can be done. Surrender. See, and love is an act of surrender to another person. Total abandonment. I give myself to you. That's quite mad, because you see, it's letting things get out of control. If I worked on the light, it would take care of the rest. You bring the light in, and that takes away the darkness. And that's love. Love is ultimately light. When you feel love, you feel light. There's a lightness inside. It's a fundamental truth. Love is the strongest force ever. And so I will greet this day with love in my heart. I will greet this day with love in my heart. And I will overcome evil. Self-love is the cure to self-hate. I don't love me until you tell me that you love me. I don't like me until you tell me that you like me. Most of the people out here are running around empty. They have no sense of self, no sense of self-love. When I say self-love, it has nothing to do with celebrity, money, materialistic things, and all of the things that your negative mind could probably go to. I love me independent of you loving me. Before you can love someone regardless of their religious beliefs or their political beliefs or their economic status, whatever those things are, you gotta not only like you, but you gotta love you and you gotta fall madly in love with you. We were two completely separate people on two completely separate individual journeys. My happiness was my responsibility. And we decided that we were going to find our individual, internal, private, separate joy. And then we were going to present ourselves to the relationship and to each other already happy. Place the responsibility for your happiness on yourself. I invested too much. I invested too much to quit. I made too many sacrifices to give up. I paid too much. I stood before your mama and your dad and said, till death do us part. If you leave, you will not leave me over the phone or through a letter. I, you will look me in my face and tell me you go. After I bring you the roses. That if you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it. If all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, and if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it, and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after that thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope and confidence, and stern pertinacity, if neither cold poverty, famish or gulf, sickness or pain or body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want, if dark and grim, you besiege and beset it, with the help of God you'll get it. Well now really, when we go back then to falling in love and say it's crazy, falling. We don't say rising into love. There is in it the idea of the fall. Taking this ghastly risk is the condition of there being life. You see, for all life is an act of faith. The moment you take a step, you do so on an act of faith because you don't know that the floor is not going to give under your feet.
The moment you take a journey, what an act of faith. Any kind of undertaking in relationship, what an act of faith. You've given yourself up. This is the most powerful thing that can be done. Surrender. See, and love is an act of surrender to another person. Total abandonment. I give myself to you. That's quite mad, because you see, it's letting things get out of control. All sensible people keep things in control. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Police, security, vigilance. Watch it, guards, watch it. Who's going to watch the guards? <laughs> Actually, what is really sensible is to let go, is to commit oneself, to give oneself up, and that's quite mad. So we come to the strange conclusion that in madness lies sanity. When you fall in love with somebody else and you trust them, they may, as a matter of fact, not fulfill your expectations. There will be disappointments and failures and disasters as a result of taking these risks. It's a gamble. But that risk has to be taken. The alternative to taking that risk is much worse than trusting and being deceived. Kenosis is a Greek word meaning self-emptying, self-sacrifice, and thereby conferred freedom of will and the power to love human beings. And people who give the power away are tremendously strong personalities because the more they have given it up, the more they get it. You know, you, you do this complete let off of control. It's a lovely irresponsible state to be in. What I am involves what you are. If I am I because you are you, and you are you because I am I, then I am not I and you are not you. In other words, we are not separate. You know, uh, you can't, for example, have two sticks. You lean two sticks against each other and they stand up because they support each other. Take one away and the other falls. And so in exactly that way, we and our environment and all of us and each other are interdependent systems. We know who we are in terms of other people. We all lock together. And therefore, that what you call the external world is as much you as your own body. Love is not something that is a sort of rare commodity. Everybody has it. Existence is love. Because you see, in tying up love in knots and becoming capable, incapable of it, you can't destroy this energy. When you won't love and you won't let it out, the thing comes out in the form of self-destruction. Uh, so everybody has the, the force running. The thing is, first of all, to get it moving. to follow whatever kind of love you have in the first place. The, the first thing then is to discover what indeed you do love, if anything, and you will find there is something. And then go into the nature of that. Now it's said that selfish people love themselves. I would say that that is really a misunderstanding of the whole thing. If you explore what you love when you say you love yourself, you will make the startling discovery that everything you love is something which you thought was other than yourself. You suddenly discover that yourself is bigger than you thought it was. It uh, includes the other. And you can't do without it. You, this brings about a fundamental change in the understanding of the meaning and nature of self. And 
thereupon they have become a change of attitude to other people. Your love, which is what you are, begins to express itself quite naturally and unaffectedly in a wider way. Now you may ask, well, how are we going to love? I don't think that's quite the question. It isn't so much how or where are we going to get the love from. We all have it. It's simply deep down in us, bursting to get out. The desire to love and to be loved is, I think, probably the deepest thing that there is in us. Certainly, if the relationship of infancy to the rest of life have any truth in them at all. And so it's a matter of seeing that this deeply repressed love must be let out. I love, single people are so funny to me. They're sitting in Starbucks and they got themselves a book and they, they read it to themselves and they got the latte and they're just reading and they're in a quiet space and they're doing good and everything's fine and they're just like, this is a good day. I'm just coming out by myself. I'm just going to have a day by myself and I'm just going to read and this is good. And then all of a sudden, here comes a married couple. They come and walk right on in and then they, they kind of sit near a table near you and they're just sitting there and they're holding hands, you know what I'm saying? And they're looking into each other's eyes and they're just like this. And the single person says, see, you see, God, you see, I, I ain't got nothing in my life, you see. I just wish if I just had somebody to hold a hand with, if I, if I could just have somebody just to snuggle with, if I could just sip somebody a latte and they could sip my latte, just, it would be so good. Little does a single person know the married people sitting at the table saying, oh my goodness, that look good. She's all by herself. Oh my, if I could just get a day alone, if I, if I could just get my thoughts to myself, oh God, this hand is good. But that last guy, I wish I could read a book sometime. I wish I could take a day by myself and the married people looking at the single person like ah and the single person looking at the married people like ah and the enemy got us all messed up because he wants you not to see that you're blessed right where you are you're whole right where you are you're complete right where you are he wants you to spend your life looking at what you don't have instead of using what you got I want to encourage somebody out there who's thinking about quitting and giving up Somebody who has been praying for years for things to turn around. You're thinking about quitting. You're thinking about giving up. Don't give up. There are some times in life where you fall down and you feel like you don't have the strength to get back up. So it's like one step at a time. You just want to to step out of it, to step out of the, 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 the whole race, the whole business. The, the monstrosity of being alive overwhelms you. We cannot deny the forces that once we attain a certain level of pleasure, then we're going to get used to it. But if it gets, you know, redirected or it doesn't happen the way we want, well, that's when the suffering comes. You take steps in this direction, you take steps in that direction, and sort of get lost along the way, and sometimes you fall down. But if I fail, I try again, and again, and again. For as long as I try, there's always that chance of getting up. And it's not the end until you've given up. And just the fact that you're here should persuade you that you have another chance to get back up there's still hope. Where is there happiness? Well, happiness is found within, within the heart, or found within the whole world, everything and nothing. It's not in one particular thing, but it's in everything. You know how it feels to have a broken heart? 
and I know how it feels to be alone. But I just want you to know that it's not the end. You're thinking about quitting. You're thinking about giving up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Stay in it. Stay focused. You've got to reevaluate and attack life again, and it's, it's tough. It's hard. You know, it's like being knocked back almost. Even though you're successful, it's like being pushed back again. Yeah, whether you win or you lose, the depression still sets in, right? Yeah, yeah. The number of uh, teens, Gen Zers, 20-somethings suffering from uh, depression and anxiety and loneliness. Loneliness is through the roof. This is one of the biggest issues that they're dealing with on college campuses. We rise to our maximum potential when we're of service to others. Going back to anxiety, going back to depression, going back to loneliness, I truly believe that's the answer. That's the way out of any kind of mental illness. It's like, I'm gonna make myself a better person, I'm gonna make the world a better place, and everything that I'm doing, I've got these two chariots, and I'm going down this road, or I'm going down this road, or I'm going down both together. There's a lot you're wrong about, a lot you don't fully understand yet, and that's okay. What matters more than being right is your willingness to learn. Work every day to develop an open mind. Those with narrow thinking will only ever experience within the tunnel they have enclosed themselves. Those open to change will experience life. And if life begins to feel stagnant, look around. Appreciate the now that you are in. Give yourself a break. In the end, your life will not be defined by the days spent working or worrying. You'll find yourself reminiscing on instances that will be meaning to your life, so collect these moments. Memories etched into your mind. The nights you know exactly what it felt like to be alive. The meaning of life is the meaning you create for yourself. So spend your time with the people who mean well and do the things that mean the most. Remember you are young, and age gracefully. All the kids want to be adults until they become adults, so remember to be the kid you are, and remember to enjoy the process. Don't overload yourself. You know as much as you need to right now, and you are still growing. You are still learning. Take the time to be youthful. The world will try to make you feel old, as if you are running out of time, but remember, the world doesn't die when you do. It was here before you came and it will be here after you leave, so take full advantage of the time you have while you're here. You're not ahead of or behind anyone. You're exactly where you need to be. Observe others on their paths. Watch them grow. Cheer for them even. But do not compare yourself. Because a life lived in comparison is a life half lived, so live entirely. And if there's a heaven, give them a show. Let them find themselves enamored by the path you've chosen to follow. Show them what it means to be alive. You don't just become confident overnight. Confidence is something that you actually need to work at every single day. But the problem is a lot of times when we have a test, an exam, a big interview, something happening, a moment in time where we need to show up, it can feel like that confidence is impossible. It can feel like those moments are so few and far between and that we're not enough to handle it. That we're not gonna be able to make it through, that we're going to crack under the pressure and all of those things may or may not be true and they may happen and they may not. But what's true is that you are enough to handle it and if you use 
the strategies that we're gonna talk about in this video, you actually lean into the things, the tactics, the actions, and the habits that you can build to become more confident, then the next time you show up in an interview, the next time you have an exam, the next time you need to rise to the occasion, you'll be enough to handle it. Even though those moments may feel challenging, like the moment is just too big, like you're not enough to handle it, that's not true. You are able to overcome that, but it's going to take effort. It's going to take consistent action and using the strategies you need to be able to become more confident. You're nervous, you're scared, you're worried and you don't know what's gonna happen. It may seem like things aren't going to get better. It may seem like all of the days, the weeks, the months are all merging into one and it seems like you can't make a difference between one day and the next. It may seem like these things are not going to get better, like the world will be forever changed, like things won't be different. It may seem like we're losing so much and part of that may be true, but we are also gaining. We're gaining perspective. We're gaining appreciation. We're gaining understanding. We're gaining hope. We're gaining connection even if it is just through a screen. We're gaining trust. We are gaining support. We are gaining presence with the people in our lives and people that we don't even know. We're gaining love for people that we've never met and we're gaining community with people that we have not and maybe will not ever meet. Through the stress, through the anxiety, through the worry, through the frustration, through the anger, through the fear, we will become stronger. We will become better. We will become this altered version of ourselves that has a deeper understanding for what's possible, that has a deeper appreciation for the people in their lives. We will become more connected. We will have a deeper appreciation for life than we have ever had before. Even if things get worse, we are stronger than anything that can happen to us. We are bigger than any circumstances and any challenges that are put in our way. We are bigger than our biggest problem. We are more resilient than any virus. We can outlast any threat. We are more courageous than any enemy that we have ever and will ever face. We are better together. We are stronger together. We are more of what we are actually able to be together. And we will outlast. We will come out of this better than we started, but we will not come out of this better just by doing nothing. We must raise the bar. We have to raise the game. Raise your will. Raise your energy. Raise your standards. Raise your commitment to the things that you want to create. Raise your commitment to your life. Raise your kindness. Raise your patience. Raise your willingness to be a part of the solution. Raise your courage. Raise your compassion. Raise your drive. Look at what you're doing every single day. What habits are you holding on to? What things do you keep on doing that you know that you shouldn't? What new habits do you want to build that you know will make you a better version of yourself? What habits do you want to get rid of? What new decisions do you need to make? And what decisions do you need to leave behind? How are you going to come out of this better than when you started? Wake up early, put time and energy and effort into the things that matter. Give time to the people that matter. Put in real effort, do more than you think you should. Do more than what is asked of you. Go the extra mile. Push yourself beyond what you thought that you were capable of. Add more value to every situation, in school, in your relationships, and in your life. But even just setting goals is not enough. Writing down your goals, writing down what you want is not enough. Why? Because we do not take actions based on the goals that are written down. We do not take action based on what is on our vision board. We take action based on the way that we feel. And the number one way to overcome that, the way that we jump over that hurdle is one thing, is to take action regardless of how you are feeling. The one way to overcome the feelings that hold us back, the feelings of being unmotivated, the feelings of being lazy, the feelings like we're not good enough, that we can't do that thing, is to take action. Hello, and welcome to your day.
a day of fulfillment, a day of opportunity. A day of opportunities or challenges that may come your way. What are your expectations? What is it that you ultimately want? What are you looking to do? It is time for you to stop wandering in the wilderness and start focusing on the journey at hand. Pushing yourself forward and working as hard as you can is only a fraction of what this journey is going to be all about. Will you be prepared? Are you prepared? Will you accept the fact that your birth was no accident? Will you accept the fact that there is a purpose attached to you? Will you accept the fact that you are a living, breathing testimony? It is time for you to stop feeling sorry. It is time for you to stop doubting. It is time for you to stop being afraid. The risk that you take in most cases are the greatest victories of all. You cannot sit back and wait and wonder and think that you do not know what it is that you are seeking. You are seeking success. You are seeking victories. You are seeking growth. You are seeking potential. Because you, my friend, are the greatest creation on earth. All you have to do is fight for what it is that you believe in. Push with integrity. Don't just hope for it. Will it. Don't just think about it. Be about it. If you want something, you have to go get it. It's all business, nothing personal. Stop keeping your head down. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. If you want it, go get it. It's yours, your body, your mind, your soul. It is one. All you gotta do is go out there and get what it is that you are looking for. It is not gonna be easy, my friend. It is not gonna be a walk in the park where you can walk and smile all day. There are gonna be some dark days. There are gonna be some rainy days. There are gonna be some sunny days. But at the end of the day, you are above ground and not under it. It is time for you to push harder than you've ever pushed in your life. It is time for you to work as hard as you can. I want you to take a look in the mirror. The image in the mirror, that is not who you are. You are greater than the image in the mirror. You walk, you push, you do whatever it takes. You keep working hard. You dig deep. You find a way. You make a way. This is your time. Don't wait for somebody else to give you something. Earn it. You work for it. And from the bottom of my heart, conduct your business. I can see your friend saying, why are you wasting your time trying to get out of debt? Why are you wasting your time trying to beat cancer? Why are you wasting your time trying to start a new business during an economic crisis in the world? Here it is, you're trying to accomplish something. 
Here it is, you're trying to do something and yet there's some fear, right? Because you've never seen anybody do it before. You're not sure if you're gonna make it. You're not sure if you can accomplish this thing. You're not sure if this thing can really happen. And what you really want is to send somebody in first to make sure that the coast is clear. You, you really wanna send somebody in first to make sure that everything is all right. Well, I've got good news for you. You are that one. Why, why, why Noah? Why would you try to build an ark? I can even see maybe people laughing, people laughing, saying, here goes Noah, he's out there building, thinking that he's going to build an ark. This is dumb. Don't he see the sun is shining? Doesn't he see how great things are? Doesn't he see that there's no need to even have an ark that big that doesn't make sense? And I can hear people laughing at you. Why, why, are, you, why are you trying to get married, man? You know nobody gets married in our family. Why, why, are, you, why are you trying to be a millionaire? Come on, lead out of Oh, ain't nobody trying to be no millionaire in our family. We don't make millions in our family. I see people laughing at you and they laugh at Noah until that one day where that first drop of rain started falling on their head and I know they were thinking, good God, it's raining out here. Yeah, they, they laughed at Noah until it started to rain and rain and rain and then they all wish they had an ark. They wish they had built themselves a boat. They wish they had built themselves something. Can I tell you something? The same thing is getting ready to happen to you. Oh, they're laughing now, but it's about to rain. And when it rains, they're going to wish they had a million dollars. When it rains, they're going to wish they had raised their family right. When it rains, they're going to wish they had finished that degree. When it rains, they're going to wish they had lived a better life. When it rains, they're going to wish they had eaten better and worked out and treated people right and had a 20-year vision. I'm telling you, it's going to rain. Build your ark. You're the one in the family that's got to go first. You're the one in the family that's got to go to college. You got to go get that degree so that you can come out of school and look at the rest of your family and say, hey, it's good. It can be done. You are the one that's got to start the business. You got to go in there first so that you can come out and say, hey, y'all, we can all start businesses. This thing can be done. You are the one that's got to start building legacy and start living for legacy so that you can come out and say, hey, everybody, this thing is good. You're going to be the first. You've been called. Everybody who's building legacy is called to blaze the trail. It is your responsibility to go ahead of the crowd. Why? Because you've been placed there first as a sign to everybody else that this thing can happen. And I want to challenge you to accept the responsibility. Go ahead and be the first. Go ahead and accept all that comes with being the first because you're not just doing it for you, you're doing it for everyone behind you. I challenge you to be the first. That's why you're listening to me right now, because you know that deep down on the inside, you've been called to be the first, yeah. You will be the first doctor in your family. You will be the first lawyer in your family. You will be the first one to have a successful marriage. You will be the one to overcome that addiction. You will be the one to overcome diabetes and beat cancer. You will be the first one to have successful children and to be an amazing parent. You will be the first in your family to overcome that great thing that you thought no one could ever overcome. That's why you're going through so much. That's why it seems like life has so much on your shoulders. But the truth is you've been called to be the first. I want you to know that you matter. Yep, I said it. You. Not anybody else, but you. You matter. When you wake up in the morning, I want you to know what you do matters. When you brush your teeth in the morning, I want you to know that you matter. When you iron your clothes in the morning and you don't feel like getting out of bed, I want you to know that you matter. I want you to understand that you matter because what you do could change somebody's life and the trajectory of what they can overcome. I want you to know that you matter because nobody ever told me that I mattered. 
I want you to know that you matter because you got people that's depending on you right now you may have some kids you may have some younger siblings you may have mom dad grandma auntie there's somebody out there that's depending on you so i want you to know that you matter but you have the ability and you have the tools and the power and all of the amazing characteristics that are on the inside of you are ready to come out and come to fruition and ready to see you walking your purpose and who you were called to be and what you were called to do. Because you and I are the aspirin to somebody's headache. How long are you gonna let them suffer? So I want you to know that you matter. Because I remember my 8th grade teacher told me I'll never be anything in life I'll either be dead or in jail So I want you to know that you matter I'm telling you that I'm depending on you Because you matter And nobody can tell you What you can't overcome If they've never been through it So I want you to trust the process I want you to stay 10 toes down I want you to understand that you can prove them wrong Because I want you to know you matter. Uh, the thing about loving myself I actually came when I had rock bottom. And I really had bottom, and it was a desperate attempt to save myself. And in this desperate moment, I made this vow to myself. I vowed to love myself. And I, you know, it was a longer vow, but it, it was about loving myself. Where that came from, I had no idea. I still don't. It was a pure primal vow. It came from like a deep place of literally I was trying to save myself. Then I realized that I don't know how to do that. And I got to figure out because I made a commitment to myself and, and a vow to yourself is a sacred act. Yep. You know, you, you do that, you keep it and life will change. And I have to figure out how to do it. It's an internal thing. It's a mindset. It's where you, it's a belief. It's a rock solid belief where your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions rise from. If they rise from there, then your life rises from there. There is no perfection. That's very important to realize. It's not like, oh, now I've hit it. You're just doing the work every day, just doing the work, doing the work. And it compounds. And before you know it, it's running on its own. And there's no failure either. If you're doing the work, you're succeeding. We're human beings, right? And fundamentally, like the mind, we're stuck with the human mind, this monkey brain that runs around on this untamed horse, right? The details differ, but I think the core is the same. And fundamentally, it's, it's it's fear and love. You can't fight fear. You know, like fear, you know, it's, it's a concept that I've, I've learned is that, you know, light and darkness. You can't fight darkness. Darkness is the absence of light. So what you do is you work on the light, you bring the light in, and that takes away the darkness. Yeah. And so that's something I actually really learned on my, on my own in trying to save myself, was if I worked on the light, it would take care of the rest. And that's love. Love is ultimately light. When you feel love, you feel light. There's a lightness inside, you know, for lack of a better word. It's a fundamental truth.